What's up? Welcome to Mission 13. Strategically, the Blitz is probably the most interesting thing about this mission. But first, we need to talk about a mechanic Dante has that is something a lot of people probably don't even know exists. Distortion. Distortion occurs when Devil Trigger is activated or deactivated. Dante will flash white for a second. During this window, any attack that hits will get an enormous damage boost. This is just a quick intro to it. There's a lot more detail there when it comes to maximising your damage, but for fighting a Blitz there's only a few timings you need to know. In this mission, the Blitz opens up with his shocking teleport move 100% of the time. For whatever reason, that involves standing there for 20 minutes to let us wind up a lunge punch, so that's very good news for trivialising this enemy. When your charge reaches level 2, if you activate Devil Trigger as you release it, you'll distort the hit and knock his lightning shell off in one clean blow. Very useful. If you're positioned correctly, this lines you up for the next step of the sequence. Real impact. The distortion timing on this is pretty pivotal. If you do it too early, the blitz will fall out, and if you do it too late, you'll do garbage damage and it won't get launched. Hit the DT button just after the second blow connects, and you'll get these huge meaty hits that absolutely shreds through the blitz's remaining health. After the second one, a few more hits will finish it off, so do whatever you want. Emira Assaults are an incredibly trashy enemy that can't reasonably be fought in any kind of a cool fashion. You can spawn camp the first guy and clear him out entirely with a distortion wheel impact, and quite frequently another assault will leap into your uppercut and lose about 70% of its health, although it didn't happen here. Mostly though, it's about dodging and staying out of range of their plant appendages and whittling away with the shotgun. Not the most stylish of fights, but finding a good opportunity to attack can be prohibitively difficult. Regular assaults can get pretty messy too, unfortunately. I try and play 100% safe here, which means a lot of spacing them out with charged shotgun blasts and trickster. Shotgun can knock them down, but it's not 100% consistent, and there's a chance they'll break out of combos without warning if you hit them with devil arms, so actually committing can be a little scary. Gilgamesh is the general go-to weapon here, since it does the most damage per hit, but when you get an opportunity you want to make it count. But as all Devil May Cry players know, style is of course the most important thing, so I try to work in some other weapons and have fun. Thankfully, the next two fights can be entirely skipped. Between the Blitz and the upcoming Echidna fight, we'll have copious amounts of style by the end of the mission, so there's no need to worry about fighting this fodder. Echidna is of course the absolute highlight of this mission, and as Dante, one of my absolute favourite fights in the series. There's so much room to style and do interesting stuff, like air tricking through the sky and playing around with the massive amount of space and height you're given. So you can make good use of your entire toolset, and there's never any downtime. As far as strategy for a no damage run goes however, she's pretty straightforward, it's almost all in your execution. Use a lot of jump cancels to do damage when she's not rooted, and make sure you stay mobile and ready to react when she's in the ground. Her 3 tentacle attack where she swings her arm upwards and summons them from below you caused me real grief. And it took me a while to figure out a good pattern for dodging it. 
air dashing away, double jumping, then air tricking back in ended up being the most consistent thing I found. The timing was pretty awkward to learn. All her other attacks had pretty big tails and were mostly beaten by jumping straight up in the air and using gunfire to stall your momentum for a bit. Mashing out Devil Trigger pinups is the most damage you can do to her. It gets kind of nutty really, and it gives you a dumb amount of style even though you're just mashing the same move over and over. I didn't want to rely entirely on this because it's pretty against the spirit of the game, but I couldn't resist showing it off just a little. Phase 2 gets pretty crazy, and she's flying around diving all over the place. She can be really unpredictable and make unexpected moves, and the camera isn't exactly the best either, so expending some devil trigger for extra air dodges and jumps makes things a ton safer. Aerial combos get a bit riskier here too, since she's firing seeds all over the place, but your attacks will mostly shred them before they reach you unless you're attacking really slowly. Still, it's pretty easy to get hit, so I try and take it slow and only attack when she's properly open. When she lays the seed, if it's not dealt with, it can actually be one of the biggest threats in the whole fight, so it's well worth sacrificing some combo time on the boss to kill it before she becomes active again. And it has a real penchant for attacking from off camera at the most inopportune of times, so don't mess around with it. You have to finish things with the rose throw and keep it classy. I don't think there's a better way to end a fight personally. Lucifer is the coolest. That was mission 13. Catch you guys next time. See ya.